Like and subscribe on the way in the door, my people. I hope you all are having a truly, truly fantastic day today. So, uh, today we're going to talk about, uh, in my opinion, why I think we're likely never to see the same kind of greatness in the NBA uh, of pr previous generations. Uh, greatness slash exciting basketball. And, you know, I'm sure uh, a lot of these younger kids and, of course, the narrative out there is that, you know, today is the best game we've ever seen. Today is, is greatest basketball as there has ever been in the history of basketball. All these players are uh, more skilled and faster and more athletic and blah, 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 blah. And, yeah, this is the narrative around uh, basketball today. But so here's my thoughts behind why I don't believe we're ever going to see the NBA great again. Because I honestly believe the access to information has ruined the grind. The easy access that we have to information today has ruined the grind which is kind of the beginning of the journey. So it's like the beginning of the journey is based on short, shortcuts. And, you know, we talk about LeBron James on this channel all the time. You know, he's the king of shortcuts. Uh, he's kind of what made a lot of this BS acceptable in the NBA. And, of course, you got uh, Commissioner Voldemort who has allowed the players to <laughs> uh, basically run the NBA now. But yeah, th this whole shortcut thing, uh, to me, this generation, this newer generation is based on shortcuts. And it starts with the ease of access to the information. And what do I mean by that? I mean, now, and I've said it on this channel before, and I'm sure everyone or most of you who uh, listen to this channel have noticed the same thing in the NBA that all the players look like they learn to dribble out of the same playbook. Uh, they look like they learn to shoot out of the same playbook. All the teams look the same. You know, if I turn on the game now, it really doesn't matter which two teams it is. It, it looks the same. It could be Indiana versus Toronto or, or Memphis versus the Lakers. <laughs> you know, it's like the game is going to look the same. Where back in the day, you know, Players had more of a signature play style individualized to themselves, and so did the teams. Teams had more individual uh, way of playing that was unique to the team itself. You know, if, if you turned on, if you were looking at the Knicks versus the Rockets, the, the gameplay was going to look different than if you were watching, you know, uh, the Bulls versus Lakers. You know, and I think the reason for this, like I said, is is too uh, much ease of access of information for the players coming up today. And uh, to me, when you have ease of access to information, you're stick skipping part of the grind. Like when you have someone telling you, OK, or you can look up, you know, you can get on the Internet and see, OK, this is the correct way to dribble. This is the correct way to do that. Like, you miss out on the part of having to figure it out for yourself. Like, you miss out on the part uh, when someone is telling you how to dribble. You miss out on the part of just looking at your favorite player's dribble, whether back in the day that could have been, uh, you know, Tim Hardaway or Kenny Anderson or Isaiah Thomas, and having to watch them and, and figure out what they're doing and then figuring figuring out how to make it your own, figuring out how to apply it to make it effective for you. That's a different process than just having someone telling you what's the correct way to dribble. And this is why back in the day, you know, everyone looked so different. And this is why I think basketball in general was just more meaningful back then. I mean, yeah, I mean, let's, when it comes down to it, th this is what we're talking about, I think, is that basketball was more meaningful 
back then. Like today, it's, it's strictly entertainment and, uh, you know, it's strictly about the clout and the praise and the money. But back in the day, basketball meant something. And like I said, I think part of that meaning was having to learn to dribble for yourself and figure out what works for you. You know, figuring out what shot works for you. And, and here's the thing about figuring things out on your own is that a lot of times in that process, you figure out things that defy the conventional wisdom. When you are figuring things out on your own, you figure out things that defy conventional wisdom that you wouldn't figure out if some if you were just doing doing it how someone told you to do it. And in the defying of conventional wisdom, this is where you get greatness. This is where you get true uniqueness. To me, this is where you get more excitement. This is where you get Michael Jordan. Going back to Michael Jordan and him defying the conventional wisdom by building a dynasty. Building a dynasty without a dominant big man. When back then it was said that you needed a dominant big man to win. Now, if Michael Jordan was LeBron James in this whole uh need to do things the way that they tell you it should be done, then LeBron would be saying, oh, well, you know, if y'all don't give me a big man, <laughs> then I'm, I'm going to a team with a big man. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, I, I've decided this year I'm, I'm taking my talents to the New York Knicks to play with Patrick Ewing. I'll, I'll be leaving the Chicago Bulls. <laughs> But no, Michael Jordan, he was about the grind. And he felt like, hey, I just have to work harder. I will get this done without a dominant big man. And again, that that uh self-reliance, that willingness to figure it out is how you get greatness. It's how you defy conventional wisdom and now obviously we're talking about Michael Jordan we're talking about the championships but on a micro level when we're just talking about players and learning the skills of basketball when you have to figure things out for yourself a lot of times that's where the true greatness comes from again number one because it has more meaning when you have to figure it out for yourself when you have to figure out how to get great at dribbling by yourself without a guy telling you the correct way to dribble. It means more. It means more to you. So to me, that just makes the, the game more meaningful as a whole. And, you know, most of the video I've been talking about, you know, uh, players' individual skills benefiting from, you know, learning and having to figure things out for yourself. But even... You know, learning how to read the defense, learning how to make plays without it being spoon fed to you. To me, it's how you get really great instincts for the game of basketball. And again, you know, another difference when we're talking about uh, LeBron James and Michael Jordan, you know, LeBron James always people always want to talk about his basketball IQ. And to me, first of all, you know, we need to define what exactly is IQ. Because when I look at LeBron James, a lot of times on the court, I look at someone who looked like they're overthinking the game and who doesn't just have good instincts for the game. Like Michael Jordan, you know, and Larry Bird just had great instincts for the game of basketball. You know, reactionary instincts to, to make split-second decisions not based on, oh, this is the correct thing to do and, and that's the correct thing to do and this is what should be happening and that's what should be happening and if it doesn't happen, I'm going to sit here and complain for half an hour. <laughs> you know, Michael Jordan and Larry Bird had great instincts for the game of basketball. And again, to me, these are things that you develop 
when the game is not spoon fed to you. Like when you had to do a lot of figuring out for yourself just through your desire to want to be as great as you can be at the game of basketball. And again, like I said, I think this is why we are not likely to see a highly competitive, highly intense version of the game of basketball that we used to see. Like I said, just basketball just used to be so much more intense. You know, it used to f feel like so much more <laughs> was riding on the games than just a, a player's stats. You know, it, it felt like the players were more invested and therefore the fans were more invested. And uh, But like I said, I don't think we're going to likely see that again just due to the fact that it's, it's too much ease of information and ease of information cuts out part of the grind of having to learn uh, on your own. And like I said, and through that learning process, a lot of times you learn things that work in ways that people, you know, that defies conventional wisdom. But anyway, we're going to hold up here. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Do you agree or do you feel that the ease of information that the current generation has uh, kind of starts them off with a shortcut that previous generations didn't have. And therefore, when you start something out, when you start your journey out with a shortcut, then from there, you know, it's like we can only expect that more short shortcuts are going to be taken. And, uh, and LeBron James is case in point proof of that theory. But uh, anyway, let me know what you guys think. You all have a fantastic day, and I'll see you next time. All right.